Well, welcome to Scotland. Hey, not even the birds are here. Look at this miserable weather. Minus three. We've got minus three ants outside. All right, folks. Welcome back to the off-grid garage. Uh, for the last two and a half hours, I'm reading and commenting your comments about the bottom and top balancing. So at the moment, it looks like more people are pro bottom balancing. Well, for this, I've got a couple of questions. So from my understanding, it is clear if you do a bottom balancing, if you bring all the cells to 2.5 or 2.6, discharge them and then you wait and then do it again and again, two, three times. So you really make sure they are discharged and are on the same level. Some people have suggested you don't need a BMS afterwards because your charge controller controls your overall voltage. You charge up to, say, when the first cell hits 3.5, 3.45, and then you stop charging. Obviously, there is no absorption necessary or happening afterwards because this would just destroy everything. And eventually you would overcharge the weakest cell which has the highest voltage then. So no absorption, you stop charging and that's it. And I think you don't even float, right? Float charging is kind of absorption, right? Just on a lower level. So you don't do this either. You just stop charging. There's no floating. And you also disable the balancing in your BMS if you have one. You don't use balances because this would transfer energy from one cell to another destroys your balancing because bottom balance means we are focusing on the capacity not on the voltage so again the the three or four bucket example i had in the last video we are we are filling all the buckets with the same amount of water and every balancing would take water out of one bucket and put it into another so we've got a, an unbalanced amount of water in the buckets so no balancing through the bms bms would be only there for safety reasons to monitor the batteries on a single cell status and if one of the cell goes too high or too low it disconnects the battery i would not recommend not using a bms even some people said this if you do bottom balancing and charge only to say 80 percent or something you don't need a BMS. If one cell is too low and the other one is too high, you will never be able to recognize this unless you check them manually from time to time. And I don't like this idea to check all the voltages every month or something. It could be running out of balance for, for the last two weeks and you didn't notice, you didn't realize it. So I would always recommend using a BMS, even if it's just there for disconnecting your, your battery in the case of a high or low voltage cell. Okay, so this is, this is all understandable and makes kind of sense. Well, then someone mentioned the internal resistance is actually lower at a high state of charge. Well, if you do some research, if you do some Googling about lithium iron phosphate and internal resistance in relation to a state of charge, you will find some graphs. I'll, I'll link this document down below from, from an institute. Um, you will find that between 25 and 75, the battery has the lowest resistance. Depending on the method you use to, uh, to measure that, the internal resistance can also go up from 50%. And all this depends, of course, a little bit from what kind of chemistry you have. And it is not super clear for me what the relationship is between internal resistance and um, state of charge. And also, so I'm not sure about this because some people say, and this is probably 50-50, once you do bottom balance, you don't need to balance at all anymore. It, the battery will run forever, set and forget. And the other 50% of people say, well, even if you do bottom balancing, because of internal resistance differences between your, your cells, there is always a drift. The heat dissipation inside the battery will be different. The chemicals are not the same. Not one cell is like the other. There will always be a little bit of difference which adds up over time and makes your batteries drift. And this actually makes more sense to me than saying, well, you set the battery once and you forget over years 
to, to check them and you just run the battery as it is without any electronics, anything at all. Yo, but the, the, biggest, the biggest concern I have with doing bottom balancing um, probably, let me show you this quickly here. Hey, what's so funny? Let's say we have a battery here, which is bottom balanced and then recharge to the maximum of the weakest cell capacity, right? So they all have the same capacity and we have an overall voltage of whatever it is, 13 point something volts. At one sunny hot Australia day, this person is going to buy a second battery and does the same. Bottom balance these four cells and then recharge until the weakest one hits a certain voltage. Same process as with the first battery. How do we connect these batteries now together? Can we actually parallel these strings still? I don't think we can. As soon as we would do this, we would have current flowing from one battery to the other battery because one of them will always be higher or lower than the other one. They will not be the same, even they are both bottom balanced, but they will not be the same because the cells are a little bit different. And if this is happening, we will charge the battery with a lower voltage to a higher state of charge. And this would override our maximum voltage we have determined before. But now the other battery is charging this whole bank and the one with the 3.5 volts will actually get a little bit higher. And extreme case scenario again, we're overcharging a single cell without knowing it. And I've asked this question a couple of times in the comments as well. I haven't got an answer yet from anyone. What are we doing for future expansion with battery packs, battery banks in parallel next to each other? How does this work with bottom balancing? Top balancing, no problem, because I can set the settings in the BMS and in the solar charge controller the same and then have maybe a, a balancer connected to each of the batteries and they all will be the same. So the overall battery voltage will exactly be the same and then I can connect them without without having to fear that one of the cells gets overcharged because we've got balancing in progress BMS balancing or or a balancer action will help us to keep the cells in balance bottom balance I'm not sure how this works maybe I cannot use this method and I need to parallel the cells first before I connect them in series. So I will have only one big battery bank eventually. But even then, if I would do that, so it would be like this, you know, we've got two cells in parallel and then they are connected to the next set of parallel cells and the next one and so on. So this would be one big battery bank, bottom balanced. In six seven months time i'm deciding to get another row of batteries to expand the capacity because i'm starting to connect the house and want to charge the car more often and stuff like this you know what am i doing then i've got another four batteries which come from the supplier which have a higher state of charge or something and i could bottom i could bottom balance all these new ones as well what am i doing with the existing battery then does this mean I have to completely discharge these batteries as well to bring them? Ah, yeah. You you come over here and check out uh, check out these batteries here with your laser eyes. Come on. Mm, maybe not. So this would mean I would need to discharge this existing battery bank down to 2.5 volts. Make sure they are all 
and then connect the third row to it in parallel and then recharge the battery again. And then next year, when I get the fourth row, I would need to do the same again. And I cannot imagine if you have three rows, or so a 3P system, a 3P4S system, I cannot imagine to discharge this whole battery just to add another one. What a total nightmare. As much as I like the simplicity of bottom balancing, no, no BMS balancing, no balancers, I'm not sure if this is the real solution, if this is really good. While, while top balancing seems to, me, seems to be like we have automated quite a few of these tasks, you know, the BMS or a, a, an active balancer keeps the batteries balanced and in shape and makes sure they're all the same. So you don't have to worry about it. Well, I mean, some people have even suggested, Andy, try it. Give it a try. Do a bottom balancing. You've got one battery ready here to go anyway, which is powering your, your garage at the moment. So you can have a play with the other ones and can bottom balance them and see how it goes. Yeah, I could do this, but what am I doing with this battery then? I probably recharge it then, but there's no practical use for it because I cannot connect it to the existing system anymore. The, the overall system voltage, the battery voltage, would be totally different to the one I have. So I cannot connect this to, our, to my system at all. I cannot have one battery top balanced or with a BMS and balancer or whatever, and, and the other one is a bottom balanced battery. I cannot put them together. That wouldn't work. I'm, I'm running a higher voltage system now as the bottom balanced battery would be. So I'm back to two rows, both bottom balanced, and I want to use both. There was one person responding, I cannot remember all your names guys really, there was one person responding saying, well, during the day you're charging one bank up and then in the evening you, you put this one in your system and connect it to your inverter and then the next day you charge the other bank up and you swap them over on a daily base. So you never have both batteries connected at the same time. Surely this is a possible solution, but I'm not really doubling my capacity with that, right? Because I have only one bank connected. So I don't think this is a viable solution. Probably for a certain scenarios, I can imagine this would be possible if you have a, a cabin or something, you swap the batteries over in in a weekly base when you come over for the weekend or so. But powering a house with that, even with a transfer switch or something, I don't think this is a... I, I don't like that. I want to have both batteries connected at the same time, charge them and discharge them at the same same rate, and then just add another battery later on, maybe, maybe in fourth, one, fifth, sixth. So you, you probably can see my conflict with all this now. So I just want to put out these questions to you again. What I should do in terms of bottom balancing and having two separate battery banks connected to the same system. How would that work? If at all. I cannot see it will work. All right, guys, I don't want to make this video too long. It's just a, a quick update video, a reaction to all your comments thank you so much it really showed how split people's opinions are between bottom and and um, top balancing and as i said from what it what it looks like most people are for bottom balancing so i don't know i'm just pitching all these ideas and thoughts now to you again and see what you respond tomorrow morning then <laughs> yeah guys so far as always, thank you so much for all your comments and thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support, assistance here. I think we are helping each other out again by just thinking and brainstorming this whole situation here. And it is always great to, to read all your, your stories you are sharing under my videos there, what kind of solution you have already implemented, how it works for you and what experience you have with it. So I would say, well, we see us tomorrow for another, for a different video because I got a delivery here. I want to show you. So until then, stay charged, stay safe. Think about this again. 
<laughs> and we see us tomorrow morning again for the next episode here from the soap opera in the off-grid garage, Australia. Okay, see you then. Bye-bye.